Good morning. Good morning. Welcome Good morning. to Introduction to AutoCAD 2015. Is everybody awake? Can you hear me okay? All right. Usually I don't need one of these, but dry air and all. Uh, my name is Professor John Bordeaux, but please call me John. Uh, I teach at Kankakee Community College, which is about 60 miles south of Chicago. Uh, I've been doing AutoCAD since release 10. Uh, I've been teaching 3D since release 14. Uh, and uh, I'm a recovering uh, CAD manager, so for all the CAD managers out there, it's a tough job. And uh, so, uh, let's see. Let's go. If you got a cell phone, please uh, set it to silent, folks. Um, my cell phone is turned off because it has a little problem called butt dialing 911. Samsung calls that a feature, all right? <laughs> so I just turned mine off. Uh, today's class, we're going to take a look at materials, which is simply stretching uh, like a piece of fabric over an object. Uh, it is not doing engineering analysis. For that, you'll need Inventor. Uh, after we learn how to place materials on and off, we're going to take a look at how we manipulate the materials so it looks better. And we can see this feedback immediately if you're using visual styles. And uh, then later on, you can actually render the whole scene if you like. Uh, we won't do any rendering. Saves time in class. Uh, and at the end, we're going to take a look at creating some new materials. And how do we add those into our scene? So uh, one of the things we're going to do today is we're going to make this golf ball package. All right? all sides of the golf ball package. Uh, we're going to have everything on here except for the, even the scotch tape and the wrinkles and all that good stuff. Uh, so we'll create this material uh, and that will be part of our uh, endeavors today. So our key learning uh, uh, objectives is one, we're going to learn how to attach the materials and we're going to also remove the materials. So at this point you only need an introduction level type thing of sol solid modeling. Uh, you don't need any uh, materials and knowledge. This is an introduction. Uh, after that, we'll learn how to change the properties of the materials. And then we'll kind of move up the ladder and we'll adjust the material maps to make it look the way we want to look. And then we'll create and modify some materials. So we're going to go from like basic all the way up to um, intermediate and then kind of the advanced topics in kind of that order. Um, so. Here's our agenda. This is what my plan is. We'll start off with adding and removing materials. We'll change properties of existing materials. We're going to adjust the material mapping. Uh, then we're going to create and modify the materials. And then I have some door prizes. Yeah. Got to be here to win, right? Uh, and then I'll have questions and answers. Uh, my particular uh, presentation is about an hour 22 minutes long. <laughs> This is one of my lectures, so I kind of know the pace of it. So I would ask you to hold questions <coughs> and answers to the end. I normally take questions on the fly, but I found at AU it's better for me because I get sidetracked and we're, I'll probably say hey, I'm going to cover that anyway. So if you could hold them till then, uh, I'll answer all the questions. I'll stick around. Uh, I'll have lunch with you or whatever. Uh, so we'll keep those to the end. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to add and remove materials. So uh, in our first thing that we want to do is we want to go to our materials browser. And this can be found in our visualize tab. Now, uh, first thing I want to do is I like to work in vanilla CAD because that's the way I like to teach because right out of the box that's what students expect to see. And I've done all my uh, uh, graphics with that. But I'm going to go and switch mine a little bit so it's easier to see in the back row. Remember I said pick on people in the back row, right? So I'm going to switch that a little bit. Uh, let's go and take a look at uh, how we get there and take a look at our ribbon bar here. First thing I want to do is I have the materials over here. And it's kind of hard to see I need these things. So what I'm going to do, uh, we don't need some of these things. I'm going to right click, go to my show panels. And I'm going to turn off a couple of things here. I'm in uh, 
3D modeling, right out of the box, uh, 3D modeling workspace. So I'm in 3D modeling. And I just wanted to make this uh, panel a little bigger so everybody can see. So hopefully that's uh, not going to throw anybody off that they're missing something there. Uh, if you right click and go to show panels, we can turn on all these panels. And I normally love to have animations on, but in this case for uh, visibility in the back, uh, I like to show, keep that for everybody to see. Now, uh, we have our materials browser. And we go to our materials browser. And uh, the first thing we want to do is we want to move this thing around, uh, kind of get to our size. And we actually have two different types of materials that we have from Autodesk. The first default library is our base resolution uh, images. They're 512 by 512. But when you install AutoCAD, you can go with the medium resolution image library. Um, that is uh, for bigger scale modeling and rendering, and they're uh, 1,024 by 1,024. And you have to install that when you're installing AutoCAD. It's a checkbox that's not checked. So it's warning, you know, warning. You need to check that. If you have IT people, IT people who install this for you, you got to tell them to check it on, right? It's a common mistake. So once we open up our materials uh, library here, um, we need to kind of play with it. A couple of things I, I would like you to take a look at is when you hit the down arrow button over here, uh, we got some different types of things. Usually, I like to go in a thumbnail view. Uh, you'll see it in a list. It's not very user friendly in a list. I like to go to a thumbnail. Also, I like to sort by name. To me, that's the most logical, but you can sort by the types of material colors. And I like to increase the thumbnail size. I like to see it. Um, and so you've got to change those a little bit and, uh, so you can see those types of things. Um, also, uh, you need to size it a little bit, position it, how you ever need a big to get it here. I got a brand new install of AutoCAD. I've been using this machine for about two days. And uh, so uh, you've got to sometimes play with it, get it so you can see these things. And you need to see these. Uh, particular uh, panels down here. Um, let's go next to, uh, and let's go up here into our documents materials. Up here in the top is our document materials. What this is, this is an area for materials that you can use in your drawings. These materials will stay with the drawing. That doesn't mean you have used them yet. Uh, you just add them into the drawing and they'll stick with your drawing at, at this point uh, whenever you open up your DWG. There's a couple ways to add your materials in. I don't have anything in my drawing open yet. I don't have any objects. But I can say, you know what, I want to go with this. Uh, and actually, I'll probably go back here uh, into my library and I'll say, oh, I just want to pick on something. And I'll scroll up and down. I'll say, let's go to flooring. And if I wanted to go with this American cherry, I can drag and drop it into my drawing space, and it adds it into my drawing. It's just there available for me to use. I can actually come down and I say, well, let's go and add something else. I can go with this checkered uh, vinyl flooring, and uh, I can also right click on it, and you know, I can add it to my documents materials. And I'll start adding all the things that are in this drawing here. I can also come down and I can add it to the material to the document by clicking on this little button here right on the image and that will throw it up in there. So I can put the, for example, burgundy up in here. Now at this point all these are in my document but they're not on anything yet. At any time I like the right click, right? The best friend we got in software is right clicking. I can right click on any one of these and I get some nice tools here. Uh, we'll talk about assigning to selection later and a select objects apply to later, but essentially we can put these right onto objects if we have already selected them. If you like noun, verb, verb, noun, it will, works either way. I can also edit these. We'll talk about more of these later. If you want to have something a little bit different, you can come in here and edit these. I can duplicate it. I always recommend the students to duplicate. I always change it, duplicate it, and then make a variation of it. I can rename the name. 
I could also delete it. And I could also add it to my favorites uh, down here. We'll talk about that later. And I can purge. If I get too many uh, materials and I don't want to use them, I can take them out of my drawings, lighten up the file size. So there's a bunch of things we can do, that, but these all up here are materials that stick with my DWG. Uh, they're not necessarily used yet uh, in this case. So um, let's go to uh, the libraries area down here. And uh, let's just, uh, I hate using PowerPoint too much, but uh, let's just go and, so we got the materials browser, uh, we got the document area, down below is uh, we can add materials to our document, we can hit that little button, and now let's talk about our libraries. AutoCAD has quite a bit of libraries out there. Um, it's pretty robust. And uh, so we need to kind of spend a little time looking at how it's organized and functions. So let's take a look back in AutoCAD here. First of all, when you get into it, you'll probably see it collapse. You need to expand it. And you can go down into the library, uh, expand it out. Each one of these triangles is called a category. Each category you have various, uh, you cannot change the categories, uh, they're there in AutoCAD. Um, but you can hit the little uh, triangle and they'll have uh, basically uh, nested categories. And so I can come in here and, and go to various uh, types of categories if I like. The items on the right side belong to each one of those categories. You can see these in various ways over here in a, in my tree, I can hide this and I can have the tree go away or I can click on it and keep, keep my tree in place. I like to see the tree, but however you like to work, you can work either way. Um, we can manage all of these libraries when we come down here near the bottom. Uh, excuse me, we can pick on down here. We can manage each library. Now. In particular, if you change and create a new one, you want to put it into your favorites. And I don't have any of my favorites, but you can just drag and drop into your favorites, or you can create a new library, and the library then will not get deleted each time you upgrade to a new version. All right? So um, kind of have to get used to this libraries area, other than just clicking around shopping for materials. Okay. Now, let's get to some of the good stuff then. Uh, let's go and draw an object. We'll just take something simple here. And, uh, and let's make like a, oh, something like a 10 inch cube here, all right? And uh, so here we got an object right here. And now we want to apply an object to it. The easiest way is to come up into our document materials or any material down here in our library and drag and drop onto the object. So I'm just going to come over here, drag and drop it right onto the object. And I got a eh, so-so idea there of what it will look like. Uh, let's go and try something else. I'll take here and just build a, a box. Let's drag and drop the object on there and I get a material right on the object. Now, I don't have to place the material on the entire object. In this case, I can come over here and hold down my control key. Now I'm going to hold my control key down and I'm going to pick the material, I'm going to drag and I'm going to place it on one face of the object. And I let go and I got that material on that face only. So. Maybe this is a bizarre uh, application, but let's say you wanted a vinyl floor and some wood floor in a box. I don't know why you do that, but hey. So I'm going to hold down my control key and I'm going to drag it over here and let go. And you can see I'm now building various things on here. I can drag and drop it from, uh, let's put some stone in here. I can come over and take some marble. I'm holding the control key down and I'm just placing it on the, uh, on the object. All right. So. You can drag and drop it on the object, or you can assign it to an object. 
So I'm going to come over here, make a new object here. And now if I select the object ahead of time, and now I come up here into my checkered board, and I right click, and it says assign to selection. If I have this selected, I can just pick on it, and it plops on whatever I have selected. So there's two different methods of assigning a material to an object. One is dragging and dropping. The other one is selecting the object, and then, uh, which is your noun, and then do your verb of selecting it. So uh, let's put another object here. All right. So let's jump back here to. Uh, uh, So we applied the materials, we've dragged and dropped, we have assigned it to a selection and we have it selected first. Always remember you can hold the control key down to place it on any face of the object. All right. Now, what happens if you made a mistake? No one ever does that, right? We need to remove a material a lot of times because we change our mind. So, so back in here, I'm going to say, all right, I'm going to close this, get this out of the way. I'm going to say, well, I want to remove this material. I'm going to go back up to my Visualize panel. All right. I'm going to go over to my Materials panel. Sorry, Visualize tab. Go over to my Materials panel. I'm going to hit the down arrow, and I'm going to say Remove Materials. And I'm going to select on the object. And I pick on the object. It will remove all the material from the entire object. Now, I'll do that. Uh, I'll come up here again. I'm going to do that. I'm going to say, let's remove materials. And I pick on the object. And it takes it no matter what shape it is, if it's a you know, shape or form of the 3D object, it takes it off of all sides. If I want to just take off one face, I come up to the materials. And I say, remove materials. And I hold my control key down. I hold my control key down, I select the face, and it removes the material from that particular face. I, want it, I can actually select multiple faces, and it'll do multiple faces as well. So I can remove the materials up here by hitting my down arrow and use the remove materials. Now, word of warning, if you just pick on the object and say, I want to delete the materials, you've deleted the whole thing. That's not going to work, OK? So you want to, want to use the remove materials. Now, usually students have a question and say, can I have two materials on top of each other? No, right? If you have a material, I cannot drop another material on top of another material. It will replace the material, OK? So if I go up into my materials browser and I take my checkerboard and I drag it on here, it just replaces the material. It does not you know, have two layers of it or anything like that. So, um, you know, if you want to do that, you can segment, uh, break up your uh, uh, solid model, and you could put things on different faces, but you can't have stacked materials. All right? Now, I like to assign materials by the object, by the face, but sometimes that's a little too slow for uh, everyone. So, uh, if we go over to, uh, we can attach materials by the layer. Now, I can go in there and apply a certain material to everything in the, in the drawing. Say, all the walls will get this layer. All the flooring will get this layer. And whatever's on that layer, boom, you got that material. It's a lot quicker, more efficient, um, and it works uh, works just as well, uh, technically, to have the layers on there. So let's take a look at adding material by the layer. All right. I'm going to kill this one off. And I'm going to go down here and uh, let's see. Oh, I want to go right back there. And let's go to this living room. This is a simplified living room. It's not going to win any Academy Awards, right? But it has layers. And, uh, and let's just prove it here, right? We go to layers, 
And uh, there's my layers. And right now they're just assigned various colors, probably nothing to do with what kind of materials are on these things. So let's go in up into my visualize tab, go over my materials panel. I'm going to hit the down arrow. In the down arrow, I'm going to say I want to go to attach by layer. When I go to attach by layer, it'll bring up a dialog box for material attachment. It has each one of my layers listed here. I can scroll up and down, and right now they're all global, meaning there is no material assigned right now. But I can come over to my sofa and say, well, what do I want on my sofa? Let's make a grandma's living room, right? Let's put something gaudy on there, right? We're going to go over there and just drag it and drop it, and it places that material on there. Notice it puts a big red X. If I want to get rid of it, I just hit the X. I got the cushions. Let's give her some plaid cushions as well. The feet. Let's go with some wood spruce feet, right? The table, let's make it copper, right? And uh, we can go over here. I have all these uh, stereo cabinets. I can, I'm going to skip past some of those, and let's put down in the lounge here. Uh, let's make kind of matching grandma's here, uh, lounge chair here. Um, I got a, well, some walls. Let's put some wallpaper on there. How about some uh, wall coverings? I got some blue and gray. We'll put those on the walls. And you can put any material you want on there that makes sense, realistically. But you can put materials that have nothing to do with the object. I'm going to put in here some concrete on the plant. It doesn't matter. It's not going to analyze it as, as concrete. It's just the covering. Yes? It's what's in my document materials, yes. And uh, I could show you that in a minute. Yep, okay, sorry. And, uh, and then when I close, if I have realistic, it's putting all those materials onto each one of those layers. And to go back here, I'm up, going up to my materials browser, and all these particular materials are available in my documents library. And I have already picked some of those. Uh, jumped ahead for... Uh, speed sake. So I can come in here at any time and I can go down to the down arrow and go to attach by layer and if I don't like it, you know, I don't like that kind of wallpaper, I can go down to my walls, I can hit the X and take it out and it'll go back to global, meaning there's nothing there. All right? Uh, uh, did I do the wrong one? Sorry, hang on here. Attach by layer, uh, walls. Pick the wrong one. There we go. So it's a very fast, efficient way uh, to uh, organize things. People, if you're doing a good job with your layers, uh, you can as assign those materials to it. But you can always, at this point, still override the layer uh, method by dragging and dropping a particular object onto a particular item and override the layers. I don't necessarily recommend that. That's kind of like not using by layer with your layers type thing. But it's possible. If I want to say I want one cushion being different, I could do that if I wanted to. But I don't recommend it. Um, so really organizing of your layers and then picking your materials. If you need to have different variations of your materials, then basically just create another layer and, and, and satisfy those needs. Now, what happens if I do not, uh, if I go to attach material, if I do not have it, I have global on anything, it's going to apply uh, essentially the color of the layer to that, right? So uh, in this case, I'm not fully uh, modeled yet. I haven't applied it to everything in my room yet, right? So attaching by layer is a very handy way of going. Um, and uh, you know, if I, I need to remove them at any time, just remove them, drag them, drop them individually onto a, a particular material. And we can find out then uh, if it has a material or not. Speaking of whether or not it has a material, uh, wait a minute. we can go. 
we have to decide whether there is a material assigned to something or not. And uh, maybe it's just gray, right? Or the material's gray, how do you know? Well, we can use the properties dialog box. In the properties dialog box, we can determine what the material is by its name, or if it reads it's global or by layer, we know that it's nothing there. So let's take a quick peek at that. Uh, let's just close this off. And uh, let's go and create a new drawing here. And I'll have a couple of boxes here. I'm going to go up into my Visualize tab. I'm going to go to my Materials browser. And I'm going to pick on a couple of things here. Uh, let's go with uh, wood. Let's put, uh, let's put my cherry up cherry here and let's go to vinyl let's put some black and white checkered and let's just say I drop this on here and all right and let's get rid of this now now does this thing have a material what kind of material is it I pick on it I right click oops, pick on it I right click and I go to properties in the properties in the 3d visualization tab it tells me the material name right here I can actually click on that and change it. If you like to work in here, uh, I like to work in here sometimes. I can change it if it's in my document materials. Okay, and I can just come over here and change. Now, if I picked on this one, which I didn't put any materials on, and I right click and I go to properties, you'll see it's by layer. So that means we have not assigned anything to it. Now, I could also, we removed materials before by coming up here and saying remove materials. I could pick on it, right click. All right. I could pick on it, right click, go to properties, and I come in here and remove the material. And the way to do that is to pick global. And I pick global, and it goes right back to the default state. So we have now basically learned how to. Uh, apply materials uh, and we've learned how to remove it. We've learned how to decide whether or not material is assigned to something or not. Uh, so uh, next thing we need to do is take a look at how the materials are displayed in AutoCAD. So let me jump over to So we can decide how we want to display things. By default, our materials are turned on. Okay, so we get to see our materials, and uh, we have them turned on at, at normal and textures on. Now you're probably thinking textures, ooh, the roughness or the bumpiness of the material. That's not what it means. In computer uh, graphics, a uh, texture is really considered like a gift wrapping, how it's draped over the object. So let's take a look at that because in your first thoughts are, oh, it's a bumpiness. No, it's it's matter, is the image being draped over? So let's take a look. So I'm going to drop something on here. Uh, let's go with the cherry here. And okay, okay, let's take a look at it now. All right. So right now, I have materials and textures on. I can simply turn them off. They're still assigned, but I don't see it. Why would I want to do that? As your model gets bigger and bigger, and you start applying materials to it, you slow down, okay? My students immediately, they want the coolest looking thing. They got it all in there. And as they start getting a bigger and bigger model, suddenly my computer's slowing down. Well, we can just turn it off, and all of them are still assigned. We didn't have to get rid of them or anything like that. But if I rendered right now, and I'm not gonna do that, if I render right now, it will actually render with that material. So it's still there, okay? It's just not the texture's not draped over it. So if I come in here and say, all right, let's have the materials and 
uh, materials on, I see everything. The materials and the textures are there. And if I have just the materials on, in this case, sorry, in this case, you don't see that very well, do you? Uh, you get the base color of the material, and it still uh, renders. So you can have them totally off, you can have them t totally on, or you can have uh, the material applied, and it will still render it. I personally like to leave them on until I have a performance problem, and then you know knock it down a little bit. Um, so I'll turn mine back on. So I like to leave them on until their time comes where it's a problem. All right. So we've now learned how to place it on there. How to uh, how to, we've let's go back and recap. Uh, essentially, we've taken a look at our materials browser. We've added material. We've removed material. Uh, we have taken a look at how to tell whether or not the material is on a particular object or not. And now we can turn the materials uh, on and off. And I do recommend uh, that you use re uh, realistic as a visual style. Okay. Um, so if I come over here into my in canvas controls. I like to go to my realistic, and you can see changes on the fly when you're when you're going with your visual styles, and so you can see things on or off, uh, you know how they're progressing as you model. All right. So next, uh, learning objective we have is let's change the properties of an existing material. Uh, maybe you got a material uh, that's close. But it's not quite. Uh, maybe, for example, I have a driveway, um, and I want the concrete to be stained. Mm -hmm. Right? I have a bluish, greenish rock on my uh, my house, and I want that concrete to be that color. Well, there isn't that exact color of concrete in our materials library, but we can go in there and make simple changes to one that's very simpler, uh, very similar to that. So let's take a look at that. So we're going to change the properties of an existing material. So we're going to come into our materials editor. And we have these two little buttons on the panel of swash material. The one moved it up ahead, up into the documents materials. The other one's going to open it up into a materials editor All right, and allow us then to uh, make changes to that. So. Let's do that. So I'm going up to the materials browser, and I can take any particular one. And as long as I was talking about concrete here, let's go to concrete. And uh, let's find something like, uh, uh, let's go with, uh, let's go with a flat broom gray. And right here I have a little button. This button puts it up into the materials editor. This button adds it to the materials document and opens it up into the editor. So I click on this button, and now it gets thrown up above to use. I now can see all the, uh, the belongings of this, if you will. And uh, we'll take a look at this. Uh, first of all, you, I want you to look at the name. I always make sure you know what the name is. That's kind of important. Uh, there's a little arrow up here by the, the preview. If you click on that, you can have it presented, that material, on any shape you want. So maybe it's a driveway, I might want to go on a plane, and it'll show it what the plane is. Uh, if you're actually modeling this for something that's on a cylinder, it'll drape it on a cylinder. So try to pick the view, what, what you're going to apply it to. It's just presenting what it will look like on that shape. Um, so we have about 12 of those that we can pick. We also have four different qualities of preview. And typically, you want to set it to the fastest one, because we don't have time just to see the preview to, to generate. Uh, we're, this isn't dictating how high quality it will be when we render. This is just seeing what the preview will be like. So I like to go with the fastest. Uh, in this case. 
Now, once we've picked on it, we can come in here and make any changes we want. In my case, I wanted to go with that, uh, uh, I wanted to go with the greenish gray, and I'll just say it's John's uh, driveway, right? And I'll pick on a color, swash, and in here I can kind of just come down here and, and pick a greenish gray color, say OK. And now I can get that preview up here of that color. And so I've now just made basically a change to that material. And it's a simple change, uh, but it does a lot for me. So now, uh, let me see here. Let's throw it on this one over here. So now all I got to do is drag and drop, and there's my green stained uh, driveway. Okay. So it's actually very simple to make changes to the materials uh, on the fly, and it's in the drawing now. And so I have that renamed. I always like to rename them uh, to something that you know what it will be. Uh, so, you know, don't have bad layer names, don't have bad uh, material names as well. John, yes? When you did that, did you apply that, that color that you changed to fit that so that The question is, does, when I apply it to that material, will the uh, color uh, render it that color? Is that the question? Uh, yeah, it's going to render it, when I run a render on this, it's going to render it to this particular color and this material. Whatever I set in that editor is what it's going to render as. Sure. So I'm going to edit this material. Yeah, I, I mean, yes, yes and no. I mean, right now you have an image in here, and I'll come back to that. And this image is actually... Um, really overriding that right now. But I guess my, my point is I can come in here and make any changes I want as far as uh, reflectability, and I'm going to cut, I'm going to get to these a little later, so I don't want to get into any one of those in particular right now. But yes, uh, you can make simple changes, you know, how glossy it is, et cetera. Um, and, uh, you know, you can come down here and make changes to how much of things you want, and you can just kind of play with these. And I, I'm going to cover these in a bit, so I'm, that's coming up. What's that? Color is just one of those properties, but it's, yeah, in this case, it's a bitmap, so it's kind of, um, it's for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> uh, so now, we actually uh, come in here and we make changes. A lot of times, our materials, we drop them in and they're not always correct the way we want them. And you've probably already seen this already. When we, I dropped in that vinyl checkered uh, materials, you know, it wasn't positioned right, you know. Or maybe the blocks are not stop starting where we want them in the corner of the, uh, of the wall or something like that. And we need to adjust these uh, materials. And material maps are a way of us to take that image that's draped over our objects and to shift them in, in alter them and, and adjust those images. We're not changing any way the image looks as far as what color it is or anything like that, but we, we're shifting it, uh, we're, uh, you know, we're, we're draping it in different fashions. And we adjust those material maps in basically two different methods. We can adjust it at the material level. So any change we make at that material level it applies to everything, okay? So maybe we made a change to the color or whatever it is. It applies to everything. But what's more important is we need to change it to the object level. And that's called material mapping. At the object level, we can take each object and shift and transform how we drape that gift wrapping paper over the object. So um, we're going to take a look at these material mappings. And uh, let's take a look at, these are called object level adjustments. Over here we have a button, we can come down in here, and we have four different types. We have the planar, box, cylinder, and uh, spherical. 
Typically speaking, you want to use the material mapping in which your shape is. In this case, I have a box. I probably want to use a box, but not all the time. Uh, remember, it's whatever outcome you want. So in some cases, I might want planar and have it projected just on one side. Or I might want it to look like it's a soup can and have it project through the cylinder of it. So I think you'll see this visually when we take one image and we do it to different uh, material mappings, how it works here. Uh, so don't be confined with, oh, it's got to be a box because mine's a box. Um, so I can do planar mapping, for example. Here I have the original on the right and over here on the left. And I took that map and I pressed it through the object. And I get then the different coloring of the checkerboard. Now, if that's the finished product you wanted, you're good, right? But if you wanted it to look like the one on the right, more of a box one, well, then we'd jump and use the box uh, material mapping. So in the box one, now we're, we're wrapping the gift wrap on all sides of the box, and we can adjust how it looks. So in this case, we can have how many checkers we want on each side of the box. And it's projected, or in other words, it's draped over the object in uh, the box format. We can also go in cylindrical. And cylindrical is going to look like, hey, we're putting it now on a can, and it's going to then move that stripes around like we're spinning it around. One of those checkers all will get spun all the way around. So it's like it's taking, in this case, it's taking this checker and spinning it all around on top. This one's getting spun all around the top, or all the way around for the second level. If that's the appearance you want, fine. Uh, but you might, it might work better on a soup can type thing. And then we have spherical mapping. Spherical mapping makes it look like a beach ball, right? The beach ball effect where it, the, the, at the top of the poles, the, uh, they come to a point. Now, in the checkerboard, I was using that checkerboard vinyl uh, material, but it's very hard for squares to come to a point uh, in computer graphics. So it does seem to work a lot better on longer types of things such as you know, oak flooring, you know, when we got the, the bands of oak flooring. Those can come to a better looking point at each pole then. So uh, spherical's a little bit tricky. I would say it's a little bit, uh, what's the word, unstable at times if you're trying to take squares and going into uh, things that doesn't always give you the results you, you would expect sometimes. And sometimes you don't know what you're expecting, you're just trying it out. Um, but that's fine too. So let's take a look at how we do all these. PowerPoint is down on the uh, on the AU website. Uh, the the handout and the uh, PowerPoint are available. So I'm going to mimic this scenario. Um, let's uh, let's just put a a box in here, and uh, let's go with a let's go with a cube of uh, I don't know. Let's say ten. And, uh, all right. And let's go and put in here uh, that checkerboard. I'll drape, drape that on there. And, uh, and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a copy of it, good old fashioned copy command. And I'm going to place this out here for reference. Now, let's go up to the materials mapping. On the materials mapping, the first one I want to do is say planar. And let's go with the planar. And when I pick on, say, this object and I hit enter, it takes it and takes the uh, gift wrapping paper and it pushes it down through the entire object. Once you uh, said fine, I'll take and hit enter, it pushed it all the way down through the material. And you notice the difference between the two now. All right. Um, I'm going to go and undo that now. 
Next, I'm going to go up to Material Mapping, and I'm going to go to a box. I'm going to select on this item, and I'm going to hit Enter. And now, I'm controlling all the box with these grips. Right? I can grab these various grips, and uh, I'll pick on any one of these grips, and I slide the box back and forth, and I can control how many variations of checkers I get in the box. Right? And so I can scrunch it down and pick. Um, I, can, I can actually go, uh, which one have I done yet? So I can control it on any level of how many I want in my box. All right? And then when I'm done, just hit Enter, and now I've changed how that map is drawn on there. Now, uh, I'm going to undo that. Also, when I go up into my material mapping on a box, and I pick it, hit enter, uh, I did the move down here. That's what I was doing. I actually have the move gizmo here. Huh? I like the term gizmo. I don't know who thought of that one, but I like it, right? The gizmo. So I got a move gizmo here, and I could use that gizmo to slide that thing back and forth, as well as the grips. But I can come down to the rotate. When I put the rotate one on, I can grab it and I can start spinning it. And I can then spin it and then I can go and hit enter and escape. And now I've rotated how those objects got spun around on there. Mind you, I could do all this on each surface as well. I can come up here to my material mapping and I can go to my box and I can hold the control key down and pick one surface. And then I can go down and use, say, either gizmo, the rotator or, or the move. And I can rotate one, and I can bail out of it, and I can rotate just one face. Or I can material map any face I want to get how I want it. So sometimes the grain is not going the right way on the stairs, uh, and you need to adjust it. Or, you know, you just need to have it a different appearance, not the, the material is fine. It's just how it's, uh, the appearance is. Uh, let's go undo here. Uh, and I can also go up to material mapping. And let's do cylindrical. In cylindrical, I pick on the object. And I hit enter. And it wraps it around the cylinder. And... Uh, I can also grab it by the grips, and I can change it. I can make how many bands go around the cylinder, etc. And so I can either use my move or rotate with this. And so I get a different appearance based on that. So all these are just the way we're draping the material on there. I'm going to undo that. And let's go up to uh, next is spherical. Well, let's. Let's kind of get rid of these here, all right? And let's go and put in something a little different here. And now let's go and put in, back up to my Visualize tab, and let's go and put in a material. And let's put in something like Cherry, all right? I'm going to drag that Cherry onto the object. There we go. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just make a good old-fashioned copy of this thing. And now i got two the same. Now, I'm going to go up to my material mapping and then go to uh, cylindrical. And I'm going to select onto, or excuse me, spherical. Uh, and I'm going to select on the sphere. I'm going to hit enter. And actually I can just spin it around with my... Uh, my 3D rotate, and I'm just going to hit enter right here, and you can see it's kind of hard to see, I bet, a little bit, but there are lines running through up to the poles that make this a beach ball shape. So this one's the hardest one to do, then get right, um, and that's because of the computer graphing uh, in computer graphics. Those, you know, stretching things to the smallest point and stuff have a little bit of a problem. So uh, You'll have to play with this one a little bit uh, to get some of the results you like. Um, it's probably the least used of, uh, my students kind of hate it some in regards. Um, they just get kind of a little frustrated. They don't get exactly what they want. They get it close, 
but they don't always get it the way they want because uh, and when you think of the beach ball, you know, it's kind of bold colors and it's easy to see and it's sometimes hard to see these things. Um, but I would only use this in really spheres, actually. Okay. And uh, so at this point in time, we have actually gone through four different levels of, of material mapping. And we essentially now have uh, used the gizmos, either the move or the rotate gizmos, to help us uh, figure out how we want that material stretched or draped over the object. And we haven't changed, we haven't changed the material at all at this point. It's still the same material. And that material then is just how it's represented in each of those particular uh, views. So remember, this is by object at this point in time. Um, you know, each object is different. This is object level adjustments, not material adjustments like we have when we have the uh, change to the material. If we change the color, it applies it everywhere. This is just manipulating how it's uh, adjusted on that object. I'm running a little ahead of time. I'll take one question. If you change the material, does the mapping stay with the object? Um, hmm. Let me think here. I don't think so. I, 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 let's do it. I, I don't think so. Uh, because remember, I said you can only have one material, and I think it'll go. So, one way to find out uh, I'll go up to material browsing. Uh, let's throw a checker. Checker's not going to work so good. Let's try something else. Uh, let's go into another wood pattern here. I'll, I'll do bamboo here. Uh, let's get this over here. Drag bamboo right on there. And so, yeah, no, it does not. Um, I, I drag it on, it throws out the old material, puts a new material on there. You can't have two materials on top of each other. Uh, then we just have to go in there and do it again. You get, uh, particularly in the uh, spherical ones, you know, it takes a little bit of fine tuning. Uh, the other ones you can kind of get to where you want to go quickly, but the spherical ones are a little on the trickier side. Yes, sir? Can I show this one in, uh, okay. So you want to see this one in spherical. Okay, let's go up here. Material mapping. I'm going to go to spherical. I'm going to pick on this one. Hit enter. And I'm just going to hit enter right here. And I can see it on my screen. I don't know if you can here, but you get, whoop, you get a line. Where did I go here? You get a line right through here, right? So there's, there's a couple different shades of that wood going on right there. Um, yeah, you're, you're looking at two different shades of the wood going on, like two different grains of the wood kind of thing. So uh, this one here is the one that takes the most work to uh, modify. Uh, let's see here. So at this point, uh, we are kind of jumping over here. Let me, let me jump back to the PowerPoint here. So we've gone through the move and the rotate gizmos, and now we're at to create and modify materials. So kind of now we're, we're moving up the ladder a little bit, and um, we want to uh, create some materials and modify materials. There's three different ways of doing that. Um, the first one is we want to duplicate an existing material. If we duplicate this ex existing material, we just give it a name like John's driveway and we make a minor change. It is the easiest way to get going. You're not spending a lot of time. You found a material you like, you made a copy of it, and you made a tweak to it. It's easy, right? It's the way I recommend first to get going in creating and modifying materials. Uh, so I'd say that's on the basic level. The next level is, we can take a particular category, such as concrete, 
And in the concrete, it'll give us all the different variations of concrete, and we can decide whether or not we have a broom finish or we have a, 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 a straight line broom finish, a smooth finish, uh, and stamp, non stamp, uh, epoxied, all those choices that we have now. Now, we've kind of upped the amount of choices you get. And you, set, you spend a little bit more time making decisions on what that concrete's going to look like. But you do get a good starting point without having things being in the wrong spot. In other words, you get your finishes effect, you get your, uh, you know, your patterns, whether you want broom or uh, trawled, etc. So it's the next level because you have so, so many choices. And our third and last option is to create materials from scratch. And that's called generic materials. Now this is, hey, you dictate every single thing about the material. And that's the most advanced one. And it's not that it's that hard, folks. What really is the issue is, it's sort of like, I was only going to look at the internet for two minutes. And you were there an hour. <laughs> right? You know what I'm talking about, right? You get in there and, ooh, wow, hey, ooh, wow, ooh. And time goes by in a flash when you're doing this. So uh, when we get there, um, I actually recommend the image mapping is the first way to go on that. And that's what we're going to do here is we're going to create this golf uh, box, uh, golf ball box. This is a 24 golf balls. Uh, most golf ball packages are a dozen, but I slice, right? <laughs> so let's take a look here. Uh, so first one is creating a material from an existing material. All right. What we want to do is just use the duplicate command. And the duplicate command can be found in a couple different ways. Uh, one, we can find it down in the text editor. Um, we also can uh, right click on the object and we can go to duplicate. And we're going to just give it a different name. And by default, it's going to go like uh, parentheses one or parentheses two. Give it a real name, right? So uh, let's say I got some uh, American cherry in mine. And uh, let's go back here. And let's get rid of these things here. And let's. Uh, Let's go in and uh, let's go back to home. And let's put a box in. And I'm going to go up to my uh, Visualize tab. I'm going to go to my Materials browser. And right now I have a material uh, called American Cherry. And if I right click on it, I can say Duplicate. And now I got material uh, American Cherry 1. Well, I'm not so fancy about the 1. Uh, that's kind of like having bad layer names. That'll lose points in class, right? And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of call this furniture. All right? And now I've created another copy of American Cherry. And this one's called furniture. And I can come and click on this button, and it'll edit that. Now I can come over here. And I can say, well, this one was used for flooring. Now I can just change it and make this for furniture. And now I can close it. And now I got both variations of this particular material. So it's very simple to use, right? And I recommend that because you can usually find something similar. But keep in mind, you can use sand for a lot of things. That's not sand. It doesn't matter what it's technically called. Right? Use it, for, use your imagination and name it to what you think it would look like. So you can use sand, for example, in all kinds of applications. You change the colors and whatnot, and you got some unknown material of some sort. So don't stick with what's there all the time, but it's easiest a lot of times to find one you like and just make a variation of it. So that's the first step. The next one is creating a, a material from an existing material. Now, I'm going to come down, down here at the bottom, and I'm going to click down here, and you'll see that I have all these categories. And I can say, new using a type. 
And when I pick new using a type, it's say, oh, OK. Um, well, which one do I want? Uh, what am I going to use? Let's go with the uh, concrete. And now it says default concrete. All right? Now I can come in here and say I want it to be a stamped uh, bluish gray or something. All right? Blue gray. All right? And now I can just come in here under the color, pick a little different color. I can come in here and pick on a sealant if I want one. I'll go with epoxy. I can come down here in finishing uh, bumps, and I can say, all right, let's go down here, and let's go with stamped, all right? And I can bring in a stamp file at this point. Um, and I didn't want to go there just yet, but you can make any type of these changes you want. Uh, if I'm just going with uh, other than the custom, I can just come here and say I want it polished. And boom, you've made changes on the fly. You can say I want it weathered or not. Uh, I can say, yeah, I can have it weathered, and I can bring in an image and have that weathered or not. Uh, so you can make changes on the fly based on that type. And uh, so you can kind of make anything you want, and it doesn't necessarily have to be concrete. That's the word of warning I want to give you. Um, and I can also come in here and say, well, I can come in here and make any particular paint, uh, metal, uh, anything you want by the particular ones. I, I'll go with water, for example. In the water, then, you can come down here and say the type of water I want. I can go in here with a uh, ocean, pond, lake, or whatever. I can set the wave heights, etc. And you just have to give it that name. I want a you know, certain kind of lake, Lake Superior. I want the wave heights to be, and you just kind of give it a name, and there you go. Um, so you get a lot of choices here uh, that are kind of built in inside in parameters. So that's the second level of doing things. Uh, we want to jump ahead and let's go up to, let's go here. So we've done existing material, we've done an ex existing material type, and uh, there's all kinds of uh, the different uh, categories. Just kind of thumb, th the easiest way is to thumb through them a little bit and kind of get an idea what's in there. Uh, you know, of the materials, uh, the metals, you know, you say, oh, what are the metals? You can kind of just get a better idea if you just spend five, ten minutes thumbing through each category, you'll learn about what types of things are there. Uh, most efficient way to, to kind of get an idea. We go to our third level is creating a material from scratch. So what I'm going to do here is uh, I'm going to mimic this box. And this box is actually, I measured it, got a ruler, right? Uh, and I draw it with the box command. And uh, then after that, I'm going to create a new generic material. I'm going to give it a name. And then I'm going to pick on some of the settings of this generic material. And so let's go into uh, AutoCAD at this time. And uh, I'm going to close this. And there's my box. All right. Now, first thing I want to do is go up to Materials Browser. And I want to come down to, uh, down here on the bottom. Let me pick here. Right here on this bottom here, I picked down. I was using the types before. At the very bottom, I got new generic material. I click on new generic material. Uh, I can come in here and uh, eh, let's cut down some of the confusion here because uh, I used an existing one. I'm going to purge all of them out of there. Yeah, let's get down to zero here. So now let's go up here and let's create a new generic material. And uh, what do we name it here? So, all right, I'm going to name this thing, uh, let's call it Tailor Made. Trying to stick with my handout on the in the documents on the on the web and golf ball package and cover and I'm going to capitalize cover so I can see that. Now, what I have done is I've taken this package 
and I put it in on top of a flatbed scanner, and I've scanned it. Okay, nothing fancy. Then I just take in any type of photo editing software, such as Photoshop or Paint, and I just cropped these uh, so that it's just the actual image. Okay, so I actually have an image in here this exact size that's scanned in. So I already have that. Those are in your data sets, uh, so you can unzip those. And uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on this image here. So I'm going to use the image mapping. I'm going to click right on this swash for image. And I'm going to go out and find that data set. And uh, I'm going to come up here to, hopefully, data files, Taylor May. And I should have one called cover. All right, I'm going to say open. And there, it will open it up over here in the material text uh, the material editor over here. Uh, material texture editor, excuse me. And uh, now we need to come in and change some of these settings. The first thing that we want to do is we want to come down here and set the scale to the size of this package. Okay? Now, right here I have this aspect ratio. I want to uncheck that. Right? Now I'm free to come in here and put any size in here I want. Well, the width of this thing is uh, 10.75, as I measured it. I'm going to click down here, and I'm going to put the other measurement is 3.75. Now, I also want to come down here and tell it whether to repeat it or not. Well, I don't want it to repeat. I don't want it to be like a tile floor. So I'm going to come down here and say, well, no, I don't want any repeating on either vertical or horizontal. And now I'm getting this particular image right here uh, setting up pretty good. Okay? Now, uh, let's see here. Also, over here on the left, I have my glossiness. You know, how much gloss is on this? And I'm going to set mine to 50. All right? And I'm going to come down into my reflections, and down in my reflections, I'm going to turn this on, and I'm going to set my reflections of how much light bounces directly off of it. I'm going to set that to uh, 5, and I'm going to set obliquing when the light comes in on an angle. We're going to use Snell's Law uh, in physics, and we're going to put that at 5. All right? And essentially, then, um, I'm going to close this. And I'm going to close this. And I've created a new generic uh, material uh, called TaylorMade Golf Ball Package Cover. I want to test this out. I'm going to drag and drop it in. I'm going to use my control key, right? Because I only want it on one surface. So I'm going to use my control key. I bring it in. And I let go. And voila, right? Now. Right now, that looks pretty good. I haven't even rendered it. I don't have no lights in here. I don't have any rendering done. It looks pretty good so far. I need to do the other materials. So let's go through and make a new material. All right? So I'm going to come down. I'm going to go into uh, make a new generic material. I'm going to make this thing now, same basic thing, tailor-made, right? Tailor-made golf ball package. And this time I'll do uh, I'll do the uh, well, I'll do the front and sides. Um, yeah, I'll do front. I'll do the uh, let's do the front and back. Do front and back. All right. And uh, let's go with here we go. And I'll come down here. I'll click on the image, and I'll go front and back. I'll say open. Uh, I'm going to come over here again. I'm going to uncheck the, uh, the linkage here, the aspect. I'm going to click in my X down here uh, in my uh, wrong one here. Sorry. I'm click down here, un uncheck the linkage. I'm going to put my scale in here. Now, this is the front and back. So the front of mine is the same length, uh, but it actually has point. 325 as a height. 
and I'm changing it to none and to none. Now I just get the front and backs. It's the same on both sides of the box, folks. I only had to scan it once. I'm going to set my glossiness to 50 and my reflectivity. Again, I'm going to put them the same as 5. All right. 8, 5. And I'm going to close that. And I'll close that. And now I have a new one over here called front and back. I'm going to hold the control key down. I'll drag and drop. And boom. Notice I even have the cellophane tape, right? The scotch tape. Now, is that slick or what? Huh? I mean, how long would it take you? Let's think about this. This is the beauty of this is we don't have, we, we have one simple box. We're not having to model all the details so it's computational fast. We're just taking an image, we're stretching it over the object, right? So things are moving fast. We get every little scenario. Now, if this box has been traveling in the airport, whatever, you get all the bins. and That's what gives it realistic, right? Mm -hmm. Computer fake looks, everything is perfect. Nothing's perfect in real life, right? All our materials have some kind of stuff. That little wear and tear is what makes it look good. Uh, the throw in, uh, let's kind of back up a little bit. Let's do one more here. Um, I guess I can... Uh, Spin it around, and uh, I'll put the front and back on over here. Oop. Um, now, did I get the front and back? Now, little problem here. Uh, it's not showing up so well. So whenever I get a little problem, I'm going to go up to my material mapping, and I'm going to go to planar. I'm going to pick on this particular plane, and hit enter. And voila. Do you see why we want to do that? All right? That by adjusting our map, it was trying to put that thing all the way around the package. Right? We don't want that. We only want to apply this image, uh, this material, to one face of it and one face only. So if you have the problem where it's trying to you not know, put it correctly, we want to use those material mapping tools and move it around. Um, and while we're at it, I'll also do one more, right? So I'll go materials browser. I'll go new generic material. Um, I'm going to call this one the ends, right? Taylor made uh, golf balls. I'm going to keep the same as the uh, handout, uh, and I'll go with the ends. And I'll click on the image. I'll go to uh, uh, my left and right. I'll say open, uh, come down here, and I'll come down into my scale, unclick this aspect ratio. It's hard to see. It, it basically a little blue when it's on, kind of gray when it's not, right? I go down to my sample size. On my ends, I got 3.75, and the height of it is 3.25 tall. I don't want it to repeat. And... Now I come in here, I set my glossiness to 50, reflectivity, I set this to, uh, oops, sorry, reflectivity, I set this to 5, so, um, and you get these numbers by actually playing with the material you'll find, it could be too shiny or whatever, and I'll close it, and uh, I got the ends now, I hold the control key down, drag and drop it, and I got the end, came out pretty good, I didn't have to use any material mapping, right? I uh, come over here on this end, and I'm going to go to my my ends. I hold the control key down, drop it there, and notice that one didn't work out so well, right? That end's not, the mapping is not well, so I come up to my material mapping, and I go to the planer. I hold the control key down, I pick on that end, I hit enter, and voila, all right? So what we got here going on is, I don't have the bottom done, but I think you can kind of see at this point, you know, I actually have some little tape, some little creases going on there, it gives it a realistic look. I come in here, I even have the barcode in, right? How are you going to model that, right? 
So is that cool or what? Yeah. Huh? So that's slick. Um, and so, you know, how do we use that? Um, for example, uh, my students have typically used this thing if, let's say you have a painting on the wall uh, and you're modeling someone's uh, interior environment. You can go take a digital camera of that painting, right? Crop it and have it the exact size and place it right on a thin piece of box and you can make a painting on the wall. Uh, so there's a lot of ways in which you can apply this and get what I call a lot of bang for the buck. Yes, sir? A little bit, yeah. I mean, obviously, if I take it down to like 480 by 480, you're going to have some issues. So I would like to have that thing up, uh, typically up to 1024 uh, by 768 or higher, uh, typically. So uh, yeah, uh, you want to kind of clean it. You know, you need to kind of clean it up with uh, some photo editing software. Crop it. Make sure you have a height. I mean, you don't want really crazy numbers, though. Just a reasonable number. One more question, what, sir. What's the preferred file format? TIFFs, GIFs, PDFs? Good question. But, uh, the most preferred file, you know, you can, you can use JPEGs. I'm starting to like PNG. Uh, they're what's called lousiness. Uh, that, they have good compression. Uh, it displays really well. For bang for buck, that's what I personally like. But you could use others. But I mean, if you already have the, the image, perhaps, and something else, and you don't want to take the time. But, that's what I prefer. So, um, let's see, my uh, four, three minutes ahead of schedule. <laughs> so let me jump back here. Uh, here we go. So we got a finished product, all right? So let's take a look at what happens if I wanted to create some other material other than, say, uh, an image. I can create anything I want. So we need to learn some of these physics, if you slept through physics class, right? And, uh, you know, uh, it happens, right? My students are like, oh, I hate that class, all right? So diffuse is actually what our color is when light shines on it. It's kind of like what, the, the, what you would call is the color color um, type of thing. Ambient color, my best way to describe ambient color to my students is after the sun sets at night, and we don't have that big light called the sun, that lighting in the sky, that's the ambient light that's being reflected all over. Uh, a specular color is the shiny spot on an object. So you can set all these values to a material. Um, we also have a reflectivity. What does re reflectivity mean? Well, it's how much light is bouncing off of an object. Now, when the light comes in directly perpendicular to an object, we don't get a whole lot of reflected light. But when it comes in on an angle, Schnell's Law says the angle the light comes in at, it bounces off at that same angle. So you get uh, more reflectivity the higher you crank these numbers up. Transparency. A transparency is the measure of how much we can the light goes through an object. So sometimes you might want the object to look transparent. Uh, you know, you're doing a mechanical thing, you want to see through it. Other times, you know, there are certain materials that you can see through. Translucency is when the light comes into an object, it gets scattered at different levels or wavelengths within the object. And so it gets scattered or diffused. Now, word of warning, this one takes a little more computational power than others do, so um, I kind of, kind of just word of warning on that one. Uh, but it's it's fine to do. Uh, it makes frosted glass things like that. Now, uh, index of reflection. Uh, I'm a golfer. I hit it in the water. I go to fetch my bottle, uh, ball out of the water. It's not where we see it, right? It's always bent. The light is bent. If you're fishing, right, you're grabbing the fish. That's your uh, index of reflection. Each material has a different value for that. You can go on the internet and find these values out. So if you're trying to model some uh, beer, some, uh, some say, wine, etc., right? Uh, you can go in there and have that exact amount of reflection through the glass 
for those particular types of materials to accurately reflect how much that light is being bent uh, around through the object. Cutouts. A cutout is uh, we're trying to have see things in one spot and not see things in another spot. So we essentially will make these uh, uh, files, typically like in a Photoshop program, where we'll put black areas uh, we see through and, and white air, uh, and white areas, areas where uh, we have normal material colors. So we're just creating a, a pattern in which we can apply to material and allows us to see things in some areas and some areas it doesn't. It sure beats having to model holes in the object, right? That's a lot of competition. You don't want to do that. If you think about, say, a block wall, right? You don't want to put all of the, uh, the, the mud in there, right? You know, uh, you, you can do all that with a cutout, for example. Um, Self-illumination is the effect of materials uh, producing illumination. So things like a, uh, an iPhone or a TV screen or something, it produces light itself, that material. Uh, Self-illumination, I gave you a chart here in the handout for some of the different values of common everyday things that tend to be in your scenes. Color temperature, for those of you who are into photography, the Kelvins, for example, it's the amount of warmth or coolness of an image. Your TV, when you're adjusting your TVs, uh, if it's red or yellow, it's too warm of a color. If it's very blues and greens, it's too cool of a color. And you can adjust that color temperature of a material. Uh, a bump file. A bump file is how much raising and lowering we have in the material. This is what makes it real. Most things have little de defects in the material that gives it the realness of it. Right now my students are modeling a scene from Star Wars as one of their assignments. They're, they're making their own version of a scene in the new Star Wars movie. I had one student had, he's got an X-wing fire and it looks too perfect. And I said, is it going to the battle or coming back from the battle? If it's coming back, right, there should be bullet holes and all kinds of stuff going on. But I said, it's dirty, it's bent, it's all kinds of issues. It looks too perfect, right? That's a problem in computer graphics, too perfect. So bump files allow us to add uh, various types of defects and things. Um, so uh, surveys, remember that there's going to be computers out there. Uh, please fill out the surveys. I'm an educator, I love the feedback, right? I like tens, they're good, but I like honest feedback, right? That helps me get better. Uh, so you're essentially grading me. And I also have uh, a suggestion that you sat through this whole class and you're trying to learn this material. Hand a business card to each person next to you. And right on the back of that, introduction to materials in AutoCAD 2015. Now you've got two study buddies, just like you did in college, right? I go back to physics. If I didn't have my study buddies in physics, I wouldn't, wouldn't be finishing that one, right? So uh, take the time. Don't be embarrassed. Hand a card to each other and just write on the back of what the class name is. Uh, and they'll help you learn, and I'll help you learn. Door prizes. Um, my, my materials are from AutoCAD and its applications advanced 2015. The publisher is Goodhart Wilcox. I get every textbook made for free in AutoCAD. They just ship them to me and I read them all. This by far is the best book. I don't get any money for this, by the way. It's the best book to learn AutoCAD 3D in, okay? So that's what I recommend. And they were so generous, Goodhart Wilcox, they gave me some copies of this. So. I'm going to give away some copies of this. Anybody here from outside the continental U.S., please stand up. Uh, who thinks they're the furthest away? <laughs> Look at them all. Where are you from? London, Ontario. Sir? Calgary, Alberta. Sir? Toronto, Ontario. Ottawa. I'm further away than this. <laughs> uh, Sir? So who are my three farthest away? What do you think?
Who's, who's good geography? Who's the three farthest ones away? Ontario? Who was the Ontarios? Ottawa. Ottawa. And wasn't there Ontario over here? There you are. And then I got one more, all right? Anybody have me for a class before? All right? Who thinks they're the furthest away? <laughs> Miss? What, how far? Anybody beat Washington, D.C. further away than Washington, D.C.? Where about to New York? New York City. What do you think? New York? Or Washington, D.C. is further? New York. I think New York might be it. So it's over here. I have one, one of those. So, um, Thank you very you're welcome. So once again, uh, my email's here. Um, I live on email, right? Send me an email if you have questions. I'll be happy to answer to, uh, to you. I do have finals weeks coming up, right? Uh, I'm going to stick around, ask, answer questions. I think I have a few minutes left, uh, so I'll stick around and answer uh, questions and answers. Uh, so uh, thank you, and have a wonderful Thanks, AU. Sir. Questions? So the question is, if I'm making a generic material and I'm creating it for a specific object, do I change the parameters for that particular object? You should. You don't have to, but you should. Okay, because then it will match the exact size. If I want my painting to be a certain size on the wall, then if I say the exact size, then I get that exact size. Otherwise, you get a stretched effect or a tiled effect. So that's not as good. Will that yeah. be in the book? That's... Yes, it's in the book and it's in the handout. Uh, sir? Yes, when you're placing the material, is there, can you set the origin so that the material <coughs> comes in the exact place you want? Okay, so like in AutoCAD, you can set the origin point of a hatch. Of a hatch. Can you do that? Uh, actually, kind of no and yes. Uh, when you do the material mapping, you can shift things around, but you can't say, I want this spot to be exactly at this spot. To do that, you really want to be in 3ds Max. Right. They'll give you tools for that. Yes, sir. Uh, at the beginning of your lecture, you talked about uh, setup on uh, when you're setting up your computer. The, what was it? Resolution was it 540 or? Oh, when you're uh, installing AutoCAD, there's two different libraries. By default, there's a, a smaller sample library that comes in by default. But when you're installing AutoCAD. There's a checkbox that says, do you want to install the medium image library? You want that on. That makes bigger, more higher quality images, uh, does better job for better lighting and rendering, et cetera. So install medium uh, uh, library. So that's in the very, when you install AutoCAD. Now, if you uh, didn't do that, you can always install another product and they share. So you can, another one that has a, a material library, could, you could put that in there as well. You could also go out to the knowledge base and they got some workarounds. So is it something you can set up in options or something? No, no, it's, it's there or it's not there for the yeah. medium library. Okay. Yes, sir. When you're using a JPEG image that you took yourself for an interior package, you're doing uh, a fabric, a wallpaper, whatever, the light level's not right, it's not seamless. Do you have a preferred seamless software or program that you can take that image into to make it seamless when it tiles? Uh, so the question is, can I? Can I have uh, objects be seamless, meaning uh, it doesn't have the tiled pattern look? Uh, you would have to do that when you are creating that material in another program such as a, a Photoshop. Well, you can get a favorite program other than Photoshop. <laughs> I do a Photoshop. There's some stuff out there that can do seamless. I, I don't, but there is a class. I'm advertising another class. Uh, let me tell you what it is. And they cover that material in another class here today or tomorrow. And uh, so uh, let me tell you what the class that is. And they cover that actual topic. Uh, I think that class is, um, creating high qual, oh, no, where is it? here it is. Uh, introduction to design visualization concepts. 
It's at 1 o'clock Thursday. So that's Introduction to Design Visualization Concepts, 1 o'clock. I saw in their documentation that they cover that. Okay. All right? Other questions? Right here. Sir. For a 3D solid, um, the materials by default is set to global. What's the difference between global and like by layer? By layer, when it has not been assigned to something, Global means that it's a virtually the same thing, but you can set global to say, I don't want a material. Once the material's been on, you can set to global, and it's like taking it off. The reason so I'm asking is they're if not you much. take a 3D model and then pull it into Navisworks, anything that's set with global comes out as black in Navisworks for some reason. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean... Uh, a little bit of prep work, you, would, you could actually select things and go to properties and change it in properties pretty quickly. So uh, I think that would be a quick solve just to go wipe the whole thing, move it in there, and boom, and change it over. Okay. So it shouldn't actually, be all that big of a Actually, I, I had a question along the similar lines. If we add the material, like your box, if I brought that into Navis Works, is all that imaging going to stay with the object? Well, I see it exactly the same in Navis Works. As if I brought an image, I did an image mapping to it? Yes. Uh, I don't know that because I don't use Navisworks, but my guess is probably not because there's going to be a path file issue, okay. and you would have to maintain that path file issue I'm managing if you wanted it to do it. Okay. Um, so I would say maybe, maybe not. Okay. Um, I'm not sure on that one. If you do it on the same machine, it does. Right. I know a lot if of you, stuff. If you do it on the same machine, same path, you, you, you know, probably as as could, yes. In the folder, it tends right. to be there. So Navisworks you probably... You have yes. to publish the textures. Yeah. Okay. So other questions, sir? When you're using a lot of the standard materials, mm -hmm. how can you scale them? You know, the, like if you're using a wood floor and mm -hmm. you know that the wood you're using is four inches, mm -hmm. how do you scale them? You go into, um, into that uh, texture editor and you can go into scale and repeating and you can change the size of that scale because okay. it'll have a scale in there and you can change that scale to be bigger or smaller. Now I, globally I saw, affects I it. Right, but you can go into an existing one and change it too. And that's just one of those little buttons that are in the middle. Yeah, okay. I, I would make, personally I'd make a copy of it so oh, I don't yeah, yeah. rec right, but gotcha. go in there then and just change the, the scale on some of those okay. and that would give you, say, a bigger tile floor. Say, if instead of having a 12 by 12, you could have a 24 by 24 tile, for example. Thanks, good class. Thank you. Yep. Appreciate it. Uh, good question. Can I? Can you map to other things other than a 3D solid, like a mesh or a surface? Um, you can apply materials to uh, any uh, 3D uh, mesh modeling. You can go to uh, surface modeling. You could go to a, a planer. Um, you know, you just have some of the inherent properties of those. You know that. No, I was just thinking of your picture frame. Just do a quick region. Map on you it. could. Just instead of making True. You could do that. Um, I, I try to stick with the, the primitives as much as I can to the students. I don't like to get in the surfaces, for example. So, you know, I would say yes. Uh, you could put it on any surface you want. And it should work fine. I, I'm kind of migrating away from that, generally, uh, I, generally I speaking. I've been playing with solids because I find that shit's really complicated. Well, <laughs> generally speaking, the surfaces, uh, students will always why do you get so nervous? I said, well, you know, it's fine when you only spend 20 minutes working on a project. But when you've got months working on a project and you find out a surface is the cause of it and you could have done a solid, then you'll understand why I feel that way. So, um, I don't know what my time is here, okay. but... I just um, have one question. 